Hey everyone, I wanted to talk about Casper today. Now you may or may not have heard of that random test that you have to do to put forward your medical school application or your physiotherapy or nursing application that might be run by the big brother that's super shady. But that aside, I just want to talk about how you can get a great grade on Casper because I managed to get an interview for both Ottawa University and McMaster Medical School which both require Casper. And so basically let's start with what is Casper. Now Casper is a situational judgment test, which basically tests whether or not you are human. So instead of us having a captcha that says, I'm not a robot, now we have to do 90 minute tests that show that we're not psychopaths. It is a 90 minute test that is comprised of 12 different scenarios Basically, you have eight video scenarios and four text-based scenarios where they give you a prompt and from those scenarios, you have to answer three questions in a span of five minutes. So let's say you have a video-based scenario, you would have then have three questions followed up. That would be five minutes that you have allotted to complete those uh, questions. The video-based scenarios are mostly ethical. So they give you an ethical scenario or dilemma, such as let's say your friend cheated on a test, what would you do? On the other hand, the word-based scenarios basically ask you about your past experiences, such as tell me a time when you did blah, blah, blah. Tell me a time when you were in a conflict, stuff like that. And you have an optional break in the middle where you can uh, take a break, obviously. Now, I just wanna point one thing out clearly and do it now. Yes, you can study for it for some bizarre reason, totally not because of money. On the Casper site, it says that you do not have to study for this or practice for this. That's wrong. You can and you should because you don't want this to be the key that's holding you back on getting an interview for whatever professional program it is that you're interviewing at. So let's get into how I prepared for Casper and how I managed to do well. Okay, so now you have both video-based scenarios and word-based scenarios. And as I said, there are three questions for each scenario. The first question is always the meat of the question. This is the one that you spend the majority of your time typing. So for video-based scenarios, there is a specific structure that I followed. It was called the problems, perspectives, responsibilities, decision, and justification method. Basically, if you have an ethical dilemma, the first thing you want to do is restate the problem and make sure that you're identifying the ethical dilemma so you're showing the individual marking you that yes, you understand what the dilemma is. So that would be problems. You then want to move forward towards what the perspectives of the other individuals are in this situation. So let's say someone is no longer showing up to your group meetings for a specific project. And so you don't want to make any judgments. You have to stay non-judgmental in this scenario and you have to give perspectives basically. You have to say, all right, maybe my group member isn't showing up because he's sick, because he's afraid, he has anxiety, anything could happen and that's what you should be doing. As well, you should also give the perspectives of your group members. Say, all right, they may be frustrated, they may be this. You just wanna cover all grounds so you're showing that you understand where everyone is coming from, that you're not being biased or you're not uh, approaching this scenario from one angle. From there, you wanna then move on to your responsibility. If you're the classmate, what's your responsibility? To Is it to uh, report the student or is it to speak to them directly? Uh, or let's say you're a teacher and you saw someone cheat on a test. What is your responsibility? And you want to lay that out. So you are making sure that you're displaying what you it is that you are responsible for. Finally, what is the decision that you will make? You should always be writing down a decision. You don't want to say that uh, I agree with both sides and blah, 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 and then not answer the question. If it asks you, what do you think and what should you do? Give them a what you should do. Definitely make a decision for all instances and 
then follow up that decision with a justification. This justification should show that you are aware of what the consequences of your actions are, but you are making the moral or ethical decision at the end of the day after weighing the pros and cons. This is very key. You want to always weigh the pros and cons when you're answering these questions. And please, you do not need to read Doing Right or any ethical uh, book or anything on ethics for these. A lot of the times the questions they ask you are simple scenarios that you've actually experienced in your real life. So uh, the main key for doing well on Casper is having this structured down and making sure you can apply it on the test day. And so let's move on to word-based scenarios and then afterwards on resources and how you can actually practice. All right, for word-based scenarios now, it's very key that you have lots of past experiences to draw from. So what I would do is by preparing is by getting a list of your past experiences and writing them down so you have a reservoir to pull from when these questions come. So I've left a list of things that you should have experiences based off of or that you should think about in the description. But examples include stuff such as tell me about a time when you were in a conflict or uh, give me a scenario where you were challenged. And so you want to think about these different experiences and have them ready for when Casper throws you one of these word based scenarios so you're not caught off guard and you have time to type your response quickly and effectively. And when you're writing your response, once again, you want it to be structured. So this isn't like the video based ones though. Here you want to give a quick description of what happened. So if it's a conflict, give a quick description of what the conflict was, then explain how you resolved or solved the situation or how it ended. And then the most important thing is to talk about what you learned from that situation and how you can improve in the future. And then you'll see that that's the, usually the main question. That's how you would answer the main question. And the follow-up questions, you would give two or three sentences that will satisfy the marker or whoever it is. Now, please do not just answer the first question and leave the rest blank. People have said that it doesn't matter if you don't answer the last one because uh, others don't either. But trust me, you want to answer all the questions uh, even if it's not complete, just try your best to answer all the questions as you will lose marks if you leave something blank and it's actually stated on Casper's website as well. And so remember, ladies and gentlemen, there is no right and wrong for the most part, but you want to keep it. You want to use your common sense. Like these are stuff that a normal people would do. Don't freak out. Just respond how you normally would but you want to use these structures so you can efficiently write it and so you're not ranting while you are typing up your answers because you only have five minutes so you want to make good use of those five minutes okay so now how do you uh, practice what resources are there I think before I get into that the most important thing with Casper once again is not to read moral or ethic books or read about philosophy and ancient Greek mythology no that's not the point of Casper the point is you need to be able to actually finish these questions and have a structure down. So you want to be working on your typing speed and you want to be working on the structures that we just talked about. So making sure that the answers you have are complete and succinct. You don't want it to just be rambling on about something. So what did I use? So I used three different resources. Uh, the first one was APE's Casper Sample Test. Uh, this is just a company that uh, had Casper tests and I think they had video based ones as well as word based scenarios. So that was great and it allowed me to uh, work on my typing speed as well as work on these structures that we just talked about. There is no grading with these tests unless you want to spend lots of money which I wouldn't uh, advise on but just spend time and use these practice tests to work on your typing speed and working on the structure and getting used to the Casper test in general. There is also the Casper sample test that I use at the uh, very end of my practice sessions and this was just to making sure that I'm acquainted with the uh, official uh, Casper test as opposed to third company ones. And then I also used one, I also did one Casper test from BMO 
uh, which was another good one because it had both video based scenarios and word based scenarios. So at the end of the day, all you want to do is just practice, 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 make sure your typing speed is good and you can answer all three questions effectively and you can answer the questions succinctly using the structures that we mentioned. And with that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope it helped you out and make sure to subscribe if you would love more videos like this in the future and of course different types of videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.